Hello, I'm the Locomotive Engineer, and today I'd like to introduce you to my model of the Siemens SC44 Charger. If you've seen any of my previous videos, you'll have noticed that I have tried to keep things pretty simple, sticking with text subtitles to narrate what was going on. Today though, I wanted to try branching out a little bit and record the narration myself. This also gives me the opportunity to personally thank you all for helping this channel reach its first big milestone, 100 subscribers. When I started this channel earlier this year, I had what I thought were pretty conservative expectations. Needless to say, those expectations have been completely blown out of the water. It has really been an awesome experience to see so much engagement with my channel in such a short time. To everyone who's liked my videos, left comments, and subscribed to the channel, I want to offer my sincere thanks. With all that being said, let's get into the main topic of today's video. Something that I discovered early on with my ALC42 model was just how much that locomotive shared in common with the Siemens standard SC44 diesel. This was very helpful during the modeling process for that locomotive, as it allowed me to use photos of the standard chargers as reference whenever I needed help, adding a detail that wasn't clear from the Amtrak drawings. To model the SC44 then should be pretty simple. We just need to give it a quick nose job. The first thing we need to do is to delete the ALC42's nose in SketchUp. Nothing too complicated there. Next, I fiddled with the nose's base profile to match the shape of the SC44. You may notice that I essentially draw each curve twice as I'm working my way through the model. This is mainly due to the limitations of SketchUp. If I leave the curves as splines, they're prone to glitching when I start to edit them into more complex shapes. Simplifying them into their constituent line segments is the best of a less than ideal set of options. Now, since there are also some detail changes below the windshield, I'll delete that portion of the model as well. The locomotive looks pretty odd now, but it's ready for us to start building that new SC44 style nose. The next thing I did was to make a seemingly minor change to the windshield profile. This change still ended up requiring me to pretty much redraw the windshield section though, so it took a while to fully make that change.
Even with that relatively small update, it's starting to look a little like the SC44 already. Let's keep going. Next, I drew in a rough draft of the nose seam and started drawing this locomotive's unique lower nose contours. A lot of what I do when modeling a complex set of interlocking shapes like this can basically be boiled down to trial and error. I draw my best guess for a given shape, examine it closely, and then make any changes that I think are necessary to improve its accuracy. I repeat this process again and again until I'm fully satisfied with the contours. Some models take a lot more attempts to get right than others. With my initial draft of the nose complete, I turn on SketchUp's advanced sliding feature to get a better sense of how it actually looks. It's pretty close, but there's something about the inner curve that I'm not fully satisfied with. I eventually determined that it was bent a little too far in. After a set of somewhat clunky and complex adjustments necessitated by SketchUp's idiosyncrasies, I eventually find a shape that I think will work. Here I do a quick check to make sure that the nose still looks good when fully mirrored. Sometimes this process can reveal problems that weren't obvious from the half profile, but this time everything turned out nicely. Now we'll join all the different pieces together and soften the seams a little bit. With 
that, it's ready to mirror for real. Again, this process requires a bit more effort than it really ought to, due to some SketchUp glitches, but it's soon finished and ready to go. With the nose contours ready, all that's left is to add in details like the headlights and the digital display panel on the front. After a cumulative 10 hours of work, the new nose is finally complete. Let's take a look! Comparing the two chargers, we can see their similarities and differences. I'm definitely more of a fan of the streamlined ALC42 profile, but I've got to admit that I have a bit of a soft spot for that weird snub nose on the SC44. It's certainly unique among American locomotives, and in my opinion, it's light years better than, say, the EMD F125 or the MPI HSP46. Let's put this model into Blender to show it off properly. Unlike my ALC42 models, I've left this one in a drab gray for now, but that's on purpose. Since there's a much wider variety of available paint schemes for the SC44, I figured I'd see what library you all would like to see first. Leave your preferences in the comments below. Thanks again for all your support for my channel. I hope you enjoyed the video.